I'm Julia Cosby and welcome to the first international news bulletin of the year. Let's take a look at the headlines. Congress certifies Joe Biden's win hours after pro-Trump rioters caused mayhem at the heart of the U.S. Capitol. France marks sixth anniversary of Charlie Hebdo attack. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson reimposes a harsh lockdown as COVID-19 variant spreads across the country. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been denied bail by the UK court. Balochistan Shia Hazara community is refusing to bury 11 minors killed by Islamic State till Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan visits them. India has embarked on one of the world's most ambitious vaccine rollouts after the emergency use approval. But first, a chaos that is being closely watched by many across the world. Hours after an armed mob of Trump supporters stormed the Capitol building in an attempt to overturn the results of the U.S. presidential election, Congress certified Joe Biden's victory. And Mr. Trump has promised to hand over power on January 20th. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly and seamless transition of power. On what is being deemed as a dark moment in U.S. politics, thousands of riders forced their way through police lines and barricades into the Senate chambers and legislators' offices, forcing Congress to be abruptly adjourned and the building to go into lockdown. One woman was shot dead by the police and three others lost their lives due to medical causes. Meanwhile, in the state of Georgia, Democrats won both seats and with them, the U.S. Senate majority. Democrat Raphael Warnock has become the first African-American elected to the Senate from the state. Meanwhile, John Ossoff became the state's first Jewish senator and the Senate's youngest member. This week, France remembered the deadly attacks on the offices of Charlie Hebdo. The magazine published a defined anniversary issue remembering the attack and denouncing what is said to be a new kind of politically correct censorship by those who believe themselves to be the kings of the world behind their keyboards and smartphones. A nationwide minute of silence observed by four million people under the slogan, Just Sweet Charlie, which translates to I am Charlie. Earlier this week, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson reimposed a lockdown in England as a more transmissible variant of COVID-19 is fueling an increase in infections and hospitalizations in the country. The reimposed measures include closures of secondary and primary schools to all except for children of key workers and vulnerable children. Residents are being allowed to leave their homes only to shop for essentials, exercise and medical assistance. With most of the country already under extreme measures, it's clear that we need to do more together to bring this new variant under control while our vaccines are rolled out. In England, we must therefore go into a national lockdown which is tough enough to contain this variant. That means the government is once again instructing you to stay at home. International flights are limited to those with legal permissions, and most outdoor venues will remain closed except for nurseries, areas for elite sports, and places of worship. Speaking of UK, WikiLeaks founder, who has been jailed in Britain since 2019, was recently denied bail as he continues to fight extradition to the United States. Earlier this week, the British court rejected American requests to send Assange to the U.S. to face espionage charges over WikiLeaks' publication of secret military documents a decade ago. This is a huge disappointment. Julian should not be in Belmarsh prison in the first place. I urge the Department of Justice to drop the charges and the President of the United States to pardon Julian. Extradition was denied on the health grounds, specifying that the 49-year-old would likely kill himself under the harsh U.S. prison conditions and cannot be granted bail since there are chances he may escape. Earlier this week, the British court lawyers for the U.S. government have appealed the decision not to extradite Assange, and the case will be heard by Britain's High Court at an unspecified date.
Moving toward Southwest Asia, Balochistan Shia Hazara community is insisting Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan to visit the Kuwaita, where dead bodies of 11 minors killed by the Islamic State have been placed as part of the protest. Prime Minister Imran Khan, however, has expressed the inability to visit the mourners, even as the protest against the killing spread to parts of Pakistan. Prime Minister Khan has urged the protesting members of the Balochistan Shia Hazara community to bury the bodies of the miners killed in a brutal attack in Match Coalfield, promising he would visit them very soon. But this assurance has not helped in any way, said protesters. Meanwhile, India is embarking on one of the world's most ambitious mass immunization programs ever undertaken. Earlier this week, Indian drug regulators gave the go-ahead for two coronavirus vaccines, one developed by AstraZeneca and Oxford University, while the other was made by locally Bharat Biotech and a government-run institute. The program comes as a crucial step to contain the coronavirus outbreak in the country, which has infected more than 10 million people, trailing only behind the United States. The country of 1.35 billion is planning to inoculate 300 million frontline workers, elderly and vulnerable people by August. Speaking of coronavirus, several countries have now approved coronavirus vaccines for use, but as populations await their rollout, cases remain high across many parts of the world. The U.S. have recorded about 20 million cases and more than 350,000 deaths. Many European countries saw a resurgence in cases during the autumn, but most brought back lockdowns and other restrictions to curb infections. Asia was the center for the initial outbreak, but the number of cases there was relatively low until India saw a surge in infections over the summer. In Latin America, Brazil has about 8 million confirmed cases and the world's second highest death toll. Those were the international news updates from us today. We wish you all a safe week ahead.